Well, let's now get to then your taking on the leadership of Obsidian because mm -hmm. uh, it, it speaks to that and, uh, you know, creating theater that people want to see. So uh, how were you first, how did you first hear about the job at Obsidian? How did you, oh, how were you um, approached? Well, Obsidian, so um, they, a group of people decided they wanted to start a black theater um, they wanted to, because they, they weren't seeing black stories on the stage, so they, um, and they wanted it to be senior artists, so they pulled together a huge number of people and they all showed up at, um... Uh, the factory. Pardon me? I no, no, remember. no, before the, before factory. Factory oh. was 2000. This was August 1999. Okay. And they all showed up and they sat and they talked about it. I wasn't invited. Okay. Right? So I wasn't there. So then they decided that that was going to go ahead. And a couple months later, they called me up um, and asked if I would come on board because um, I actually had a bit of knowledge about how to run things from an administrative point of view. So... They asked me to come on and be grandfathered in as one of the founders. So I, I was. And uh, it was at Kim Roberts' house. And uh, so that, that in itself left to a profound disconnect um, between my motivations and everybody else's motivations. So I believe that what they felt they were doing was building... Um, a theater like Soul Pepper, which was going to have an ensemble and all these people who didn't feel like they'd been getting their just deserves were going to get their just deserves and get a lot of work. I came in and I said, yeah, I'll join as long as I don't have to do any of the artsy fartsy bullshit, to quote. Um, I'm a, I'm a project oriented guy. So I got on, I was secretary treasurer of the board. Uh, I got us uh, charitable status. Uh, you know, all of that stuff is, is all stuff that I did. There were some issues with the books, so I took over the books um, because every seemingly every black organization in Toronto um, always had money problems, and I refused to be part of anything where somebody could throw that mud at me, and uh, so took over the books and with the, the idea of every dime is accounted for. Um, but th this still this disconnect started to happen because. You know, every time you start a theater company or something, you know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. And so literally it was Allison um, and I mostly who were doing all the work. People fell by the wayside because they weren't getting the, the, they, the thing didn't, it changed, right? I thought we were here just to do theater, great theater, and they thought they were getting kind of a job for life. So um, that went along. Allison had... Uh, she she was not computer literate and had no desire to be computer literate. So that became more and more problematic. Uh, Michael Miller was GM for a little bit. He left, so I took that over. And finally, Allison just said, you know, the, it's getting too big and it's I need to go back. My mom is ill um, and said, do you want to take it over? And I said, yeah, okay. And so there was a board meeting and she said, I'm leaving. Philip's taking over. Done. Well, that's easy. It was. That's, <laughs> that's what should be happening now on my transition, but <laughs> it's not. 